<laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So who's the, who's the chair of this committee? Same yeah. law. Sheila. All right. So I okay. am beginning the meeting. It is one o'clock and we are beginning cool. our first policy meeting in 2020. All right. So I don't know. We need to talk about the overview of our committee work. And um, we do have two policies to review. Um, I don't think that we have anything else on the agenda. Is that right, Jessica, our secretary? So um, the overview committee work, since this is your first meeting, um, I thought you all could talk about whatever process you wanted to use to, to review the policies, if you wanted to do them all, uh, just to take another look at it. The last uh, policy committee was convened in 2016 and wrapped up its work in early 2018. So some of the policies were reviewed maybe four years ago, four and a half, and some of them as recently as uh, two to two and a half. Uh, or you could review them individually as there's a need to do so. It's entirely up to you all. Uh, but for today, you have two policies re you're reviewing, policy P and policy J. Right. So I have a question. Um, I noticed in the, the minutes of, um, um, I think it was the February meeting in 2018, that the policy committee did also review the bylaws. And uh, I think Jessica had said something like that. And I was like, well, it should be a separate committee. But now I'm not so sure. Um, and nobody, uh, nobody cheerfully <laughs> volunteered to work on the bylaws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember <laughs> I'm for sorry. Sure. I'm nobody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, foot in mouth. Um, so, well, since Sheila volunteered, I wonder if the, po if the policy committee would like to uh, also... It, that them. totally it totally makes sense to put them in in this committee and not do a separate one for the bylaws. Okay. And you don't even have to change the name. It can encompass <laughs> bylaws. How do you feel um, about that, Sheila? I think that makes perfect sense. I, okay. I was um, I thought we would probably end up doing that anyway. So yes, I agree with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Right. So I think that we should, this is my personal opinion, start with policy P and G. Is it J or G? J. Oh, I don't have it on my agenda. I must have an old one. Um, but I think that personally, I think that it probably would be a good idea to, well, if we're going to do the bylaws, we don't want to do the whole, like all the policies and all the bylaws too. I think that we should probably decide on one to begin with and see how it goes. That sounds good. Yeah. And are there any other policies we think are going to be um, needing to be reviewed before then, before, you know, kind of a general look? I so thought I'm, we, uh, didn't we discuss needing to do, is it a policy or bylaw about, about electronic meetings? I mean, the, to, to include, elect, that's a, that's that has a bylaw. To be bylaws, right? Yes. Okay. Bylaw. All right. Okay. Yeah, there are um, two likely areas that have been identified for potential updates in your bylaws. The first is to include language that would allow for regularly scheduled electronic meetings. Um, I've already uh, initiated contact with the attorney's office so that they can help us uh, develop a framework for that, and then you all can can edit their their language that comes through. Um, if you add that part to your bylaws, right now the way that the uh, electronic meeting statements that you all say at their, your regular meetings works is everyone has to meet electronically. It can't be part electronic, part in person. Uh, but the way that they've indicated uh, may be allowable through your bylaws change is if you have an in-person meeting with a quorum of attendees, then people can still call in. So like if you're not feeling well or something like that, as long as you have a quorum of in-person people, other folks could either call in or um, connect electronically and other methods. So you would count the quorum from only from in-person, not from, okay. Yeah, that's what they've indicated so far. We're still um, hashing that out and I'll be happy to have that for your next policy committee meeting. Uh, there was another area. Well, wait, can I just, if you're gonna look at that, one of the issues that we should consider along that is just technologically how does that work only because when you have an in-person meeting and people are calling in inevitably 
I mean, unless you have really good equipment, you, you know, the people calling in don't really have a chance to understand what's going on. So we would, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, as we consider making that kind of change, we also have to consider, you know, if we would need to change the location to a place that has better, you know, acoustic, you know, like the, like the supervisor's meeting room or whatever that meeting room is, oh, in, in the government center. So it's just something to consider as we consider this as an option, because if it doesn't work practically for us, then, you know, it's just something to consider when we change the bylaw. Absolutely. Um, I think that might be less of a language that any of the county attorneys would need to draft and more of just a procedural piece that you all might want to include in whatever yeah. update goes into there. Yeah. Um, the other area that I have heard that you all may want to uh, draft for inclusion or consider is whether or not you want to have explicit language in your bylaws about how closed session works and under what circumstances you might allow for closed session. Um, that was just brought up by a trustee. Um, I'm happy to follow up on it if you'd like, but I wanted to make sure and pass it along. Do we, okay, so let me throw out one other concept and that is whether or not this board has ever considered kind of term limits on trustees, which I know is a decision of a supervisor, but there can be a suggested policy or if we've, if the last work of the policy committee considered that, if you want to put that as something to be considered, um, that is something I was thinking about. Hmm. That's something possibly new. Yes, so we don't have we don't have to discuss it now. We could just put it on an agenda for a discussion mm -hmm. later or not. I mean, just and just I had a question there. as to where is the okay. language on the closed session? Because I I looked through the. The, the bylaws, but I didn't see it. Or is it in the policies? No. So uh, the only place that would likely be appropriate for that language to be included would be with your, your own bylaws, because it's not a, a library policy. It's a policy about how you all interact as a board. And I did not reread your bylaws today, but I'm fairly confident that there's no language in those bylaws about right, closed session. Yeah. Uh, most of that is driven by FOIA law. Um, which is, is um, so there's really specific times and yeah. under specific situations that you all can enter closed session. But um, because you do it so infrequently, um, it, it came up as a topic for one trustee where they thought it might be helpful to have that language in your bylaws so that it's clear uh, what situations your board can go into closed session for. You can find that language in, in FOIA policy all on its own. It's just kind of hard to dig it up if you... Okay. Uh, because that, that must have been what Carrie would read when we went into um, closed session. Yep. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, you know, if you're reviewing the bylaws, you can add or change anything else you want to. But those are the those are the pieces that I had either heard directly from your colleagues that they wanted to consider for inclusion in an update, uh, or the electronic meeting one that the county is re recommending that boards, authorities, and commissions consider adding in. Okay. Yeah, I went through, I was highlighting, there's just one little thing where it says that we're supposed to elect the person to serve as a director on the foundation board. And I think I just appointed someone. I don't think, and I think I, when I was it, I was appointed. It was, we were not elected. So that's just something for us to um, remember. Uh, or if we want to change it to appointed, but you know, that would be. And that the term for the foundation director in the bylaws is one year. And usually it was sort of like, okay, you're it now. <laughs> you're it. Sorry. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. so that's something too. Got it. Okay. So Sheila, am I understanding correctly that for your next policy committee meeting, you want to talk about the bylaws and you want to have all of those pieces available for discussion? You know, I'm thinking, um, well, let's see how far we get with P and J. Okay. Um, I think that we should finish with that and then um, how does everybody else feel? Do you, want, do you want to go through the bylaws by yourself, look, look through them so we're familiar before the next meeting? I probably, so we'll be meeting, what, once a month, once every couple of months? I think it's totally up to you, Sheila. However yeah. you want to do it is right. fine. Um, 
Well, I, I wonder if if some of the um, the bylaws things look like kind of quick fixes, maybe, if we want to think about, I don't want to hijack things. Um, I, have, I, I definitely want to do P and J. Right, we need to do P and J. Yeah. I have not looked at the bylaws myself. And what I could do is I could send out um, the ones that I have highlighted in my review that I think could be either it would be like, well, okay, now that we see that we will obey it or do we want to change it? Like that foundation thing. And then some, there's another thing where it says the policies will be in every branch and, and it's like, no, they're online now. That's where they are. You know, so stuff like that. But I can, rather than hijack this meeting, I'll send that out if that if that would work for you, Sheila. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to look at the bylaws first. Give them a, um, you know, a glance myself right. first. But yes, and, and do that. We can we can collaborate on that. Um, okay. Because I think that well, we'll, we can get that into that later. Well, why don't we start with so Jessica? I went through my old meeting notes in library board meeting notes, and I did find. Um, the consideration consideration um, items that you would put out. I don't even remember which meeting it was, but for policy P, which is the naming of libraries, am I right in thinking that that was jump started from um, Alcorn and um, what was it Polchek's um, proposal that all county buildings, streets, parks, etc. Um, our look, the names are examined and, and um, evaluated again. Is, is, is that where this comes from? Uh, in part. So this review of policy P on the naming of libraries was initiated by a trustee. Uh, oh. They had requested that the group review it in the chance that if the county decides to rename or reassign names for certain facilities that may be linked to Confederate names during that period of time, mm -hmm. uh, that there is the off chance that it may expand uh, into other areas and that this board's policy, policy, <coughs> excuse me, should be expanded so that you all have an opportunity to think about renaming if it's appropriate and if you so choose. Uh, right now, policy P states that you can um, select the name of a new facility, but there is no clear mechanism if you want to rename a whole facility. Right. Um, if you'd like, I can share my screen. I have the policy up, or if you all have it in front of you and that's not necessary. I'll no, that would be good if you could put it up. Sure. Sheila, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I have my, I have my own copy, but um, yes, yeah, please put it up. Yes, that's good. So give me just a second here. So policy. Okay, can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay, and I'll increase the size as well. Uh, that's probably pretty good. So uh, this is your current policy P. Uh, it was amended in 2017. And as you can see, part one of it says that all new libraries shall be named for the geographic area in which they are located. And then if you go further in, the library board can um, suggest a name for a new library that doesn't have, there's no language in there about a current library. Section three, uh, says the library board will consider the renaming of the library if the request comes from and reflects the wishes of citizens within the library service area and if the benefits of the name change outweigh the costs such a name change could generate. Uh, and then the remaining sections talk more about uh, interior name changes like to a room or a piece of furniture and then uh, signage for libraries. So I believe the trustee who brought this forward for your consideration was primarily thinking about these two items right here. Item two about uh, the naming of a new library and whether or not that should be expanded to new or existing library. And then item three about your consideration of community requests to rename a facility. And I shall self-identify as the trustee who was concerned. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> trying to maintain anonymity. If I know. Wants. I don't, I'm fine. Yeah, because I didn't want us to get caught in a, um, you know, some sort of a political struggle over what to, what to name a library and just, uh, you know, just to look at this and see what, what uh, the board would like to do. 
And I have a Word version up as well. I'm going to pull that up uh, just so that if you do have changes you'd like to make, I can have those as track changes so you can see what they look like. Okay. All right. Um, so, Gary, what do you think? You haven't said anything. Uh, can I ask a question? This this policy was revised last in 2017, right? Right. And was it at that time that this number one was put in? I can't remember. All new libraries shall be named for the geographical area in which they're located. No, the, that been there. the policy was amended in the areas around naming rooms and naming furniture and fixtures. Wow. Um, I believe the specific driver at that time was, what if somebody wants to donate like a, a bench to the library? There, is no la there was no language in your policy manual at that time about whether or not uh, the board can consider naming an object for a person. And the committee at that point also added in some consideration language about the fact that uh, over time, library furnitures and fixtures deteriorate and we can't keep them indefinitely. So there right, is a 10 this. year range where yeah. we are required to keep it. Right. All right there. Um, Gary, I believe those were the two main consideration points for this policy. Do you recall any others? No, I think that's right. Okay, and so now Fran, your concern was about changing what to what? Well, um, I had talked to Penny a couple of years ago about renaming Woodrow Wilson because of, of his uh, segregation right, right. history. And then we talked a month or so ago about that um, because of the, in my original question, she's like, she did not want to entertain that. And then yeah. the last time she said, well, that may come up. Because I said, well, if Princeton is renaming, maybe we should think about that too. Um, it, it, we haven't talked about it since then, but uh, my feeling was I would like the board to be prepared in case there's also a, a big movement against the names that of founding fathers and mothers because they they had slaves. Um, and my feeling on on that is that um, well, I would not like to see them renamed. I think that's going too far. But but in terms of Woodrow Wilson, I think. Mainly because having seen when they renamed Jeb Stewart, which is near here, it was a really um, it was a really strange process of getting co um, community input, and it just seemed a little chaotic. and And I saw the the ballot that they used; it had some very strange names on it. And I, my feeling at the time was like, I would like us to have an orderly process in place in case push comes to shove. I want us to be ready. So when I'm when I looked at this, um, there were some very interesting things that you know the the library board will consider the renaming if the request comes from and reflects the wishes of the citizens within the library service area. This says and if the name if the benefits, which would seem to me and or the benefits, but um, you know we don't have anything in there that you know can the county board or supervisor, I guess in the line before, no, it doesn't say anything about the supervisor of the library board and whether that needs to be in there um, or not. Um, you mean, I mean, one thing could just say all new and or renamed libraries shall be named for the geographical yeah. area in which they are relocated, which would be the simplest language. It, it would but be the then, simplest but, language, and then the battle would only be if you're going to rename it all, like if you're going to get rid of a name right. of a person right. and replace it right. with a geographical area. Right, and then that gives us, you know, that the, we have a policy to stand on. Well, but the, and so if you do that, then you, um, then you take away paragraphs two and yeah. you take away paragraph two entirely. And the only thing the community right. can have an input on is whether or not to get rid of a of an old name. With no there could be more than one, mm -hmm. one geographic name though, couldn't there? Yeah, like the, the library, the Woodrow Wilson Library, if there was a consideration to rename it, could be the Colmore Library, could be the Lake Barcroft Library, it could be some 
Bailey's area library. Right. There's right. a couple of different options that they could certainly be considered even within just geographic names. One thing I think would be good, which I don't, I don't know that it needs to go in policy, but to um, uh, involve the historians at the Virginia Room at, for research of a geographical name. <laughs> I, I just, you know, because then it's uh, validated. What is that? Validated. Then the geographic. Right, I mean, right, if there's a right. you know, but. Right. It's not, it's not capricious. It's, you know, this is some research. These are some recommendations and then the board could choose. Um, and the other thing is that um, the reflects the wishes of the citizens within the library service area. And I, um, I was talking to Barbara Peters, who's on the history commission about the list of the Confederate street names that's going, that's being worked on. And that, um, I believe that if a street name is recommended for a name change, then 51% of the people who live on the street have to vote and agree with it. And I don't know that we want to be, I mean, I sound so undemocratic, but do we want to be engaged in a method of involving the entire community of a branch library in that process? Or if we as representatives are presented with a list that we then discuss and vote, is, would that be better? Okay, okay. Well, let's just back up for one second here. Yeah. Are we trying today to come up with what we, the policy, think should be the changes to the policy to present it to the board? Is that our goal today, or is our goal today to just kind of put all the options out there? I don't know. I, I think it can be either. It's up. It's up to you all. If you feel comfortable with recommended changes, then we can include those as a consideration in the October board meeting. Uh, if you are not yet ready to do that, you can continue it as a, a future item on your next policy committee agenda as well. Well, here's my only consideration. And, and again, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm shying away from controversy, but you know, we had, we had a, you know, it'd be nice to have October's meeting have nothing controversial on it. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and and the only thing that would be controversial about this would be the conversation about well who gets to come up with the proposal to remove a name so if we take away the option of a person's name for a renamed library then the only thing left is this con this this discussion around who, who gets to offer the idea that, uh, for example, Woodrow Wilson name goes away, and how would you vote, and who gets to vote, and I almost don't even want to talk about that in October, because it'd be nice to have just a calm <laughs> meeting with nothing, you know, or if we have controversy on the agenda, have it be something entirely different, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Fran? Yeah. Uh, uh, since you and I uh, talked about this, I sort of came to the same conclusion that Miriam did and actually before uh, our controversy because uh, I was worried that uh, we might create a controversy uh, there might be pressure started to uh, to get us thinking about name changes so I'm not saying don't do it ever I'm just saying don't do it in October basically right. Well, my, my thinking is that um, I think the the list of street changes is going to be submitted, I think, in December to the board. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I would like us to have something solid in place. Um, and I don't know that, it, I, you know, sort of like, would, is it that noticeable that it's going to be controversial? Because it's not going to have anything in it about confederate student names or we don't have any no but that's the only no. reason that we're making the changes i mean yeah. you know that that's why you're putting this in place and i i get it and it's not like the vote it's not like these changes themselves are controversial well i don't know i mean well, i mean what, what, well just just to speak to the process of it 
if this was, if any amendments that you all wanted to have move forward were a consideration item at the October meeting, all you would be doing in October is reading it into the record. You right. wouldn't be discussing it. There would be no board action on it. Right. So it would still be in the public's eye at that point in time, but it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be a debate. Yeah. Right. Sheila, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to digest exactly what, what we're changing here. Um, number one is pretty clear that libraries, new libraries will be named for a geographical era, area. And I think mm -hmm. that is really a good solid um, policy that you would, you just re, you just act on. Um, it seems to me that we're anticipating changing names of libraries and I can't seem to think of any library that has a confederate that falls under this right. motion from Alcorn and, and Palchek. I mean, they're very clear. They want the, 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 um, the, the confederate individuals who, were, who, who had authority under the, I'm reading now, had um, held military or governmental responsibilities under the authority of the Confederate States of America between 1861 and 1865. Now I understand the um, the problem with Wood Woodrow Wilson that that I do understand, but he was during the Jim Crow era in the twenties. What what was it? The twenties? He yeah, around World War One. Yeah, World War One. I. I mean, he does not fall into this, mm -hmm. and I think I agree with Miriam about bringing up something that's going to create a lot of discussion because I think this is a hot air hot 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 topic right now. Um, I personally think we should just have good, solid um, policies that don't, that don't, um, that you can go back on when controversial names come up. I mean, for example, when Gary and I worked on the one that had to do with meeting room names, that's very specific. It says people, individuals who contributed to the library in a positive way. And I think that the Great Falls Library was a good example. There was a a woman who had passed away and she had done a lot. She was a volunteer. I, I can't, I don't remember what she did, but I, you know, but she had a good long history of volunteering at Great Falls. So I think that that's a pretty clear, um, it's, a, it's a nice general policy that you can apply many different things to. Um, I'm not trying to skirt issues either, but. Um, I mean, just, just. Yeah. Uh, Another for discussion thing. for discussion purposes for just for discussion purposes so let's say we we move to change item number one to say any new or renamed libraries and then for items two uh, the real issue then becomes do we just leave as is that anybody in the community can suggest that a library be renamed but it would have and to that, be a, it would have to be a geographic according to item one. Right, but so the it's point a contradiction to have in there. But anyone can name suggest a name, but it has to be a geographic. No, 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 no. no. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, we would have to change. We would have I mean, there, I think number two and three are contradictory to each other. Even mm -hmm. is, is Miriam's audio cutting out for everyone else? Yeah. So it's not yeah. that anybody can sex. Miriam, your, your audio Sorry. cut out Sorry. for a minute there. And Gary, what were you saying? All right. So, uh, what I was saying is, yeah. is it clear from our current policy uh, web house, how or who would be the people to come in and say, we want to get rid of a current name and have it be renamed for geographical area? Well, Gary, what were you going to say about that? No, I agreed with it. With uh, I think it was Not Mary, sure that, or with, maybe it was you that they were, they were contradictory. Yeah, when you look at it, because um, it says first, it says there'll be named for the geographic area. Then it says the library board member representing um, has the option of suggesting a name. Well. I yeah. guess that could be okay because you could suggest you want it named for some for Antarctica or something. I don't know. 
Um, and then, but then, I mean, I think that then the next one, the library board will consider renaming if the request comes from and reflects the wishes of the citizens. So you have the library board member can do it, the citizens can ask for it. Um, but if we say, we since we're naming new libraries after geographic areas, then if, if the issue of renaming comes up, we're gonna follow the policy that we have set for new libraries. So to me, there's a consistency there. Um, and I know when you talk to people, when I talk to people say, well, why is the, why is the Thomas Jefferson Library named Tom? Why isn't, you know, the Annadale or George Mason Annadale? I mean, people love the new, you know, like Chantilly, you know where that is. Centerville, you know where that is. Burke Center, you know where that is. Um, I'm, and I'm not saying that we're gonna go back and change all of them to that, but I think for uh, as a consistency with our existing policy of new libraries, we need to bring on board that we have the same policy if we decide to rename a library. I agree with that because when I worked in Vienna, which I have three times, people didn't say I'm going to the Patrick Henry Library. They right. said, oh, go to the Vienna Library. Yeah. That already is in place. And Good it was point. almost a universal uh, way of, of naming the library by the citizens, by the people. I think that um, we probably could get rid of a lot of this then. And just mm -hmm. number one is, is says it, all, all new libraries and, and to include or renamed libraries for the geographical area. So would you like me to uh, redline through the current sections two and three? Well, well, then you don't have a trigger though. You don't have a what? A trigger. When, oh, a trigger. Yeah. Oh, when do you true. consider it? That's true. That's good. That's a good point. So something like libraries may be renamed and then dot, bolt, dot, dot, dot. Who could redo that? And what, right. you know, that, like, And that was my point, I think, before I cut out. I'm assuming you can hear me now. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So my point quickly before I cut out again is what we would need to change in here is who gets to make the suggestion that we get rid of a named library for a geographic place? Is it one sole person? If it's a member of the community, do they have to come in with a petition with a certain number? Is it one? I mean, I think that's what it basically says now is pretty much anybody or not anybody, a, a trustee, a supervisor, or any member of that particular community can do it. We could just well, leave it and then one person would be enough, but it's not a very, you know. Yeah. I, I guess technically it says everybody in the community has to do it. Everybody or anybody? It says the citizens. Mm hmm So that's pretty vague. So you have a library, a trustee, or citizens of the community. And that's funny because a lot of people use more than one library, so how would you consider the community? That would be an interesting That's a good, point. That's a good thing. point, yeah. Well, it does say within the library service area. Oh, okay. You're right, yeah, and I underlined that and then I forgot it. <laughs> so, Gary, would you recommend taking out the word the in front of citizens? Mm -hmm. So that it's not all of the citizens, it just is some group of citizens? Issues of citizens. Well, is it even a group or is one enough? This would say there you need two. <laughs> you need at least two? Well, I mean, I suppose you can make it a pretty minor consideration. I... Yeah. The, the only part that I as staff would suggest keeping in is the language about the benefits and the cost of it. Yes. Um, you yeah. may recall when the school board was considering renaming the Jeb Stewart High School, mm -hmm. the cost to rename it was a consideration point for them. I believe it ended up being about two hundred and forty or $250,000. Um, they are obviously a much larger facility than our public libraries are, so hopefully the cost would be less than that. And they would be things like the signage on the front, uh, updating any promotional materials, 
um, staff time, which is, is fine and we would handle that part. But it, it should certainly be something that you all consider if you are looking at potential renaming. That's good, I agree with that, yep. What, what if the so, county got, got into uh, changing names and uh, the, the citizens of the, of the area didn't necessarily want to change it, but if the county otherwise overwhelmingly wanted to change it, should there be a way to do it? That's, uh, that, that speaks to the question that was in my mind, who would make the final decision? How would the final decision be reached? And should that be the trustees, which would then be a vote, do you think? Is that? I think that's a fascinating question and it's one that I would be happy to do some additional research on and get back to you because I don't have an answer right now. Um, there yeah. are definitely some consideration points in there. The first is that neither the library nor the trustees own these buildings. They're owned by the county mm -hmm. um, and they are maintained by the county. So that, that could have some play in a discussion like this. Um, the other is that your board is an appointed board with the majority of members appointed by Board of Supervisor members. So I am not clear on if they would be able to supersede any decisions that this board would make around naming or if they could push down decisions about naming that they themselves had made that you all had not considered. I'm, I'm just not sure. But so I'd be I, wonder, I wonder if that would be a process like that the, the trustees would vote on their recommendation to be sent to this BOS. Maybe that's the way that it would have to. I, I feel like saying that it should be a group of at least X number of citizens who come in here recommending or request, I guess it would be that they would request the board of trustees to consider a name change. Like a, a, instead of it just saying citizens saying a minimum of 10 citizens. I mean, I kind of picked 10 out of the air, but that sounds like it's a little bit of effort. But then I wonder if the board, if, if um, I don't know who would say, well, right now we require 51% of the people who live on a street have to agree to get their street named. And I wonder if they would say, well, you have to get 51 and, or we would then have to have a town hall meeting and I don't know. I, I, I wasn't question. suggesting actually. Wait, I think see, Sheila I, was. I think Sheila yeah, was. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think that the petition would work because don't we use petitions if somebody's going to run for office or a lot of different functions in our government? We need so many, so many signatures on a petition rather than um, having a vote of a, of a street or something. Would you be able to certify them? Oh. No. <laughs> we, I mean, we couldn't, you know, we're not gonna, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess what I was suggesting is the petition would be, or, or let's call it a request, the request of, the, of a minimum of 10 citizens would be for the board to consider the name change. And then, so that's one step, that's step one. And then step two is in order to make the name change, I mean, I would just make it a board vote as opposed to putting it back out there for the whole citizenry. But maybe that's a mistake. Maybe that's too much, too much power to ourselves. Well, I think that's what Jessica is going to investigate, whether we yeah. actually do have that Can power because they're county buildings, if that we would have to make a recommendation that the county Ah, I see. In the in the name of the supervisors would have to approve, yeah. right, Jessica? I'm, yeah. I am. Yeah, I am not sure. I will. I will do the background research on that. I am not aware of the library board in any instance ever initiating a name change for a library. Mm -hmm. um, you all have named spaces and you've named places and stuff, yeah. but at least in the research that I did when we originally reviewed this policy in 2017 and the, the research I've done to date for this current update, um, I was not able to identify any facilities that you all had started the process to rename. And most, because of the policy you have in place with regions, um, most of the ones that have been new have been very easy to name. Oakton, Burke Center, um, there was not a lot of 
discussion around what that geographic name might be because it was clearly one spot, not just a lot of spots. Um, to Miriam's point about the use of a petition and whether or not, and Gary's about whether or not you all could certify it, um, I would be surprised if there was a, a venue that you all could use to certify a petition. Um, I think we would need to work closely with the county attorney's office and other agencies petitions like the office of the uh, office of elections. But I, I, I'm not aware of any other boards, authorities, commissions that have uh, language like that. The park authority might, and I just haven't read their policy manual very clearly. Sounds like we've got some additional research on this one. Yeah. I, I had some minor, of course, little <laughs> things. <laughs> um, I wonder, in number six, <clears throat> um, the principal exterior entrance sign for all new buildings must include Fairfax County Public Library, the branch name, and the street name clearly visible from the street. And I wonder if it would be clear if it'd like, um, after the branch name, comma, the street number, and be clearly visible from the street. So it'd read, the, the principal exterior entrance sign must include library, the branch name, the street number, and be clearly visible from the street. I think that makes it clearer. Uh, does, can you see my red line edits there? Does that capture what you just said? Street number, comma and be clearly visible. Oxford comma included. Okay. <laughs> then I wondered, um, it said the policy is called regarding naming of libraries, but it actually includes library spaces libraries. and fixtures. And should we include that in the title of the policy so that we know, what do you think about that? Sheila and Gary. It would be clearer. It would be clearer. Yeah. Because I think that um, unless we divided up the one, two, and then started over again, it sounds like without look, reading very, very, very carefully, it's, it talks about people in the community giving, you know, get, helping out the library and being involved with the library. I think that would, I think renaming it to include what? Meeting rooms and what what word would um, uh, library uh, spaces uh, and fixtures spaces and fixtures yeah is spaces okay or well it includes meeting rooms and what else do we have meeting rooms and um, furniture so I like that comma after spaces it's the yeah. because it's not just spaces and fixtures it's spaces fixtures alone. Anyway, we'll have to have a philosophical Oxford comma debate. That's the Oxford comma. I believe in the Oxford comma. Post I know meeting. it's quite controversial. <laughs> my husband. <laughs> so, so we will not include this in your October agenda because of the controversial Oxford comma. No. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I, what are we going to do? What do you want about? Yeah, what I mean, I think I personally agree with you, Fran, about including Spaces and fixtures. Does that I, does that cover it all? Library areas, meeting rooms, Bench and benches. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. a fixture. Yeah, I think. Fixture. Yeah. Right. I was kidding. Spaces um, and fixtures. Yeah. So we have to wait for information from the from the county attorney. Is that right? Um, so I have three items to follow up on for your behalf. I'm going to look into the two pieces related to the Board of Supervisors, whether or not they could decline uh, a name change that the Board of Trustees had recommended, whether or not they could push down a name change that you all had not considered. Mm -hmm. And I'll also look into um, whether or not there's any plausibility to the Library Board uh, using a petition and if they would have to get something like that certified, which I suppose that they would have to but I will follow up on those three areas. Yeah, that, that kind of process would make it too expensive probably. Yeah, I'm just not sure how, how that would function for, for you all. Um, you know, most petitions are 
uh, done by members of the public. And I, I have no idea what the certification process looks like. I've, I've never interacted in that manner before. So I'll have to do a little poking around. Well, I'm glad, Gary, that you brought that up. And there was a controversy with them. Um, people getting signatures to put Kanye West on the ballot and they, you know, and they lied to people and they covered up. I mean, cause if, you know, an official um, petition has a big heading and they cover that up and um, dissembled to people about what they were signing. So it is a big deal. Yeah. 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 But what about the name change, the title change? Does everybody agree with that? Yeah, um, it's fine. Yeah. Good discussion. Okay. Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> de depending on when you all set your next meeting for, I'll, I'll start work next week on getting that information for you all and we'll hope to have it, obviously, by the time your next meeting rolls around. And uh, the documents that will be included in your committee packet will include, um, I'm going to clean up, some of this is just my own notes in here, but it'll include the changes that you all have talked about today so that you've got those as a starting place for your next meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, so are we done with P and we're moving on to J. Okay. So policy J is regarding the privacy of patrons reading research and reading materials and library staff uh, actually initiated a consideration item for your review. Oh gosh, I'm gonna say July uh, of this year. I might be a month off on one end or another. And we were specifically recommending a review of uh, section one of this policy and the last sentence in it, which reads for patrons age zero to 12, it is assumed that parents may need access to the child's records. Uh, this policy was last updated in 2018 and staff were recommending a review and update of this policy based on a change in FOIA law that went into effect on July 1st of 2020. When that consideration item was posted for your review, we were notified by several FCPL employees who uh, keenly watch your board packets, so that was good to know, hmm. that uh, they did not uh, agree with the interpretation that was uh, posted about why that language should be changed. Um, staff and administration had recommended it based on the update that happened in 2020, but uh, following additional research and review from the county attorney's office, we had inaccurately um, assessed that law. So I'm going to pull up another page here, which is this one here, and increase the size. Good. <laughs> So this here where I've highlighted where it says number three is the actual updated language in the uh, portion of Virginia code related to FOIA exemptions. And I'm going to read it in full just in case uh, Miriam is driving or anything like that. It yeah. says yeah. information contained in library records that can be used to identify one, both A, any library patron who has borrowed or accessed materials or resources from a library and B, the materials or resources such a patron has borrowed or accessed, and two, any library patron under 18 years of age. For the purpose of clause two, access shall not be denied to the parent, including a non-custodial parent or guardian of any such library patron. So, um, I'm gonna be frank and say that I assumed that I had just missed some kind of very large FOIA update in the midst of the pandemic. And that when this was brought to staff's attention, um, we were just kind of laid on the ball with it. So we put this forward for your consideration in July, not having realized that the only portion of this that was updated in July of 2020 was a very minimal piece that was actually sponsored by our friends in Loudoun County. So the part that was updated in the law was they added the words, or resources in these two areas. Uh, and the point of this update was to ensure that library patrons would not be able to have their list of either checked out materials or utilized resources available by FOIA from any member of the public. 
So previous law had just said borrowed or borrowed materials. So if I am a member of the public and I am really interested in what the patrons at Woodrow Wilson have checked out over the last month, I could file a FOIA request and based on prior law of borrowed materials, that request would be denied because that is an exemption under FOIA. But previous to July of 2020, if I had said, well, if I can't get the books that the patrons at Woodrow Wilson checked out, but I really wanna know what databases that they looked at and what articles that they viewed in online newspapers, it did not have the language or accessed resources. So technically, somebody could have FOIA'd that information. Hmm. Um, so the good folks up in Loudoun, uh, our buddies in the library up there, recommended those minor additional changes to this piece of the FOIA exemption, which was passed and went into effect on July uh, 1 of 2020. But because we here at FCPL were not apparently paying enough attention during the pandemic, um, we assumed inaccurately that the language added in here was strengthening the language about access to a parent to a child's record. So to get us back up to where we are, uh, library staff put the item in as a consideration item for your full board packet in July. And then we actually requested to pull it in August after we were notified that we had inaccurately interpreted that. Uh, following that, I queried the county attorney's office and received authorization to share this direct language with you all. Um, and some of it, this little, this first paragraph is what we asked them, uh, whether or not the Fairfax County Public Library must provide parents access to both the identity of the minor, as well as the materials or resources accessed by that minor. <coughs> they note that your current policy, <coughs> excuse me, um, they note that as set forth more fully below, the library may not deny parents access to records that reveal the identity of the minor child. Parents are not, however, entitled to records that reveal the materials or resources borrowed or accessed by the minor. They follow up with the exact FOIA language, which we just went through, and then they give a little bit of additional explanatory text here. Uh, the statute is written in two relevant parts. The first part applies to all patrons and allows the library to discretionarily exempt both the identity of the library patron and the records and materials they access. The second part also applies to library patrons, provides parents, provides that parents may also have access to the records that show the identity of their minor child. Stated another way, minors are also library patrons and as such both their identity and the materials they access are discretionarily exempt with the caveat that their identity is not exempt from their parents. I don't understand. What that means in practice, because that's a lot of legal language, is that the library maintains a record of who you are, your library card. Right. That has your name, your address, right. phone number, your email account, those kinds of things on it. Right. The library, per this FOIA law, cannot disallow parent access to that record. So if you are a parent of a 16-year-old, and you came in and you said, my minor has a library card, we have moved, I need to update their address, we would be required to do so uh, and be required to provide them with a copy of what is on that library card record. However, we are not required to provide them access to the resources or materials checked out or accessed. So if you had a child who was say 16, same one, and you said, okay, I've updated their library card record with our new address. I'd also like a list of everything they checked out. Based on your current policy, library staff would say, we're happy to update the address. We will not be able to share the record of checkouts with you. So the way that your policy is currently written is um, legally valid. There's, there's no issues with um, discrepancies between the updated FOIA law and the policy that you have in place. <clears throat> and staff, myself, apologize for the confusion on this one uh, and about putting it on as a consideration item without fully confirming the changes in that law that went into effect. I'm going to pull So, it. So are you basically saying this whole conversation, the end result is that we don't have to do anything? In part. Um, so I am okay. saying, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that 
Uh, your policy as it stands is accurate and you do not need to do anything. Uh, okay. Staff do not recommend making any changes. However, okay. if you'd like, you can use this, an, this as an opportunity to reassess whether or not this committee and the board continues to feel it's appropriate to allow children age 13 and over privacy of the materials that they have checked out or accessed. I didn't want to close the books on it by just saying, hey, we made a mistake. We took off the consideration item. Sorry about that. I wanted to make sure that you all had a full opportunity to understand what had actually changed in the law. And since you're reviewing policies, if you wanted to, you could reconsider that portion of this policy. Uh, again, staff aren't asking for it. We're, we're not recommending it, but you certainly can. It is your policy. Uh, I, I, I do have a question. Hmm? Um, you, you may recall when we considered this, uh, uh, I had an amendment to uh, have our policy uh, the same as the uh, school policy. Um, and um, it was defeated. I, I think I had three votes. Um, so I, I have no interest in bringing it up uh, uh, to the board again. Uh, this time, I probably would only have two votes. Uh, however, I, I do have a, a concern. Um, did the attorney's office base their opinion on a, a reading of the text of the law, or did they go to the legislative intent and or any uh, case law because apparently this is a long-standing uh, a law except for the change of resources. Yes, and I should apologize. Gary did email me that question maybe a week ago or so, uh, and I have uh, initiated a follow-up on it, but I have not heard back yet. That could be because apparently the uh, attorney's office can't even prosecute uh, most crimes these days. Well, just, just to be extra clear, uh, <laughs> the, the attorney's office that you are citing right now is the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, uh, which is a, a separate office than the County Attorney's Office, which is the group that assists us in reviewing um, this type of language. But yes, there's, there's certainly um, been a lot of um, discussion and interest around attorneys this week. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Gary did uh, request a follow up on that. Um, I, I could not tell you one way or another right now um, if they base their recommendation and their legal advice strictly upon the legal language as it stands in the code, or if they go back and they look at case law or legislative intents. I, I'm just not sure yet. Yeah, the reason I ask that is because I can't figure out why they would uh want to only deal with identity. I mean, why, why would they write the law that way? I, I could hazard a guess if you'd like, but I don't know that it would have any bearing. Well, I'd be interested in it. Well, sure. So um, public libraries believe fairly, public libraries in general and the staff in them believe pretty, I'm not gonna say across the board because that would be inaccurate, but most folks uh, want to be able to maintain, maintain confidentiality and availability of access to resources for as many members of our public as possible. So I would not be surprised if the language that's currently in the FOIA exemption was supported or um, recommended by say uh, the Virginia Library Association or lobbyists for librarians or something like that. No, no, I understand that part. But, okay. But why, why would they feel a need to, to exempt just the, uh, the the fact that whether the kids got a, a library card or not. But, I don't know. That, that part I, I don't have any info on. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, pre I appreciate if you would check that out. Absolutely. I will let you all know as soon as I get something back. Okay, so we're just waiting for one answer for that, but basically we don't have to do anything to it. Uh, you, you don't have to, you're welcome to consider changes if you'd like, but uh, oh, no. staff aren't recommending it. There is one extra period in the text. <laughs> oh my God. 
Oh, Fran, what are you people <laughs> doing? Why do I have to fund these things? Can we consider can that a friendly amendment and just update it on the website? Can you yes. just fix it? On, Here is, I, oh, I see it. Three, I see it. Okay. Next okay. to the last sentence that it says for directing any response, dot, dot. The library director. Oh, okay. oh, now I want to make one more dot and have it be an ellipse. That's and okay. With really, let people think and you about. Have to take out that capital letter, but you know, <laughs> take out the capital T, right? Um, so, Sheila, as chair of this committee, are you comfortable if we make a friendly amendment on the website? I, I think a friendly amendment is. <laughs> Just, I want to make sure it's it's all we on the look up. perfect. It's we want to look perfect. <laughs> yes, we may have to to discuss commas, but. Per no. Periods are pretty easy. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> I, I would hazard a guess that John might have this done by the time that your meeting is over. <laughs> Just a suggestion. <laughs> I know he's on there somewhere still. Uh, remove extraneous period. Okay. 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 So we're done with that discussion. Okay. So, um, why don't we just take a few minutes to go back to what our agenda will be for the next meeting. Um, the bylaws, I have some scribbles here about certain ones. Electronic meetings, closed sessions, um, what else? What am I forgetting? You know, the bylaws are not very long, so I think we could probably read through them in advance and yeah. you know kind of walk through the whole thing in one I mean unless something's controversial walk walk through it in an hour I think that's a good idea. yeah because I would like I'd to be glad I'd be glad to send out the the things that I noticed um ahead of time so that we'd really you know and if and other people could do the same thing mm -hmm. then we'd really be speedy right but for and my God bless you, Fran, because I don't think I ever actually read the bylaws the whole uh, me time. Me either. No, I didn't either. Well, <laughs> until today. You did within a month. <laughs> within a month of being chair, you read the bylaws. So. Yeah. I read through them. And it looks like what we're looking at are thing, new things that have come up in our world, like electronic meetings. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So bylaws for the next meeting. Okay. And we're done with this one. Um, if I receive responses uh, regarding the questions about policy P on the naming right. of libraries, would Absolutely. you like that included? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't mean to be so, you know, dismissive. Yes, I guess policy J will just wait and see what the responses are. Okay. Yeah. So we'll revisit policy J and we will review the bylaws. Would you like to set a meeting for your a date for your next meeting? Yeah, that's that's great. It's P, not J. Policy P. Yes. You uh, said naming J. libraries, policy P. Oh, yeah, policy I've been P. looking at my wasn't looking. Sorry. Okay, so oh dear, I had my calendar. So what is today? Today's um twenty five. <laughs> well, what's today? Friday. <laughs> Today's Friday. <laughs> Today is Friday the 25th, so if you would like to meet, uh, like you indicated earlier, in three to four weeks time, that would be uh, sometime the week of the 12th or the 19th. Uh, the 12th is Columbus Day, so I would recommend probably not that big because the county's that. closed. We won't do that. Um, um, such busy calendars here. Um, I. I Miriam, you have yes. Probably, what do you? What is your calendar like? I, I mean, as long as it's, I, I, you know, I'm working from home, so uh -huh. as long as it's Zoom, I can do it any time of day on any day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the week we have library board on Wednesday. I, Thursday, Thursday, uh, Thursday or Fridays are better for me if I'm going to do a middle of the day meeting. What Fridays, Fridays are better for for me those two weeks as well. Okay. So either the 16th or the 23rd might be okay. Um, Fran just mentioned that you all have a board meeting the week of the, um, the week of the 12th. So would you like to schedule it for the same week as your board meeting or a different week? 
such a big Sheila, thing. it's your call. Oh, gosh. I mean, who who knows? Um, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be wild and say the 16th, um, if that's good for everybody. That's okay. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it 1 o'clock again? I'm going to put it in my calendar right now. Sheila, does 1 o'clock okay. work for you on Friday the 16th? 1 o'clock is good, yes. Fran, work for you? That's good, yeah. Gary? Hey, yeah, that's great. Okay. Friday, October 16th, 1 p.m., and I assume you'd like to have this one scheduled via Zoom as well? Oh, yep. yeah, please, yes, yeah. I got to tell you, even when this is all over, and God, you know, I'm I looking know. to the day I when agree. this is all over. I agree. These committee meetings by Zoom are brilliant. I mean, I middle of the day, no problem. I agree. No it's driving. a little bit harder when you have 10 people, but, well, I'll try not to be driving next time. That was my <laughs> fault. I, 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 I. You know, I got my schedule a little confused here. Right. But, That's so much but this worked out. This worked out. But if we had more than more than if we had more people, we would learn how to do the chat function and um, yeah, we could make it work. It's not talking over each other. <laughs> okay. I, I got gone. one Fine. one question of Fran though. Uh, Fran? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Suzanne, you appointed her and, and we didn't elect her. Uh, do we need to do that rather than deal with the, the, the procedure? Oh, that's a good. That's question. fine. That's that would be fine. Point. So you want to put that on the agenda for the board meeting for October? Okay. Yeah. Fran, would you like um, to consider that as part of your chair's report or do we need to have it as an action item somewhere else? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> we can figure out the placement later. Um, hey, idea, Jessica, I have, I have one question for you for our, our policy committee meeting for next time on web meetings. Um, part of what we're going to have to like put in the policy is the fact that they're going to be recorded. So uh, mm. besides the video or video audio, check on the whole chat function thing. And, and because I think I don't know whether or not we have to keep those as well. If people are chatting to the whole group, but if they're only chatting to one person, then they don't. So I, I have looked into that actually. Oh, okay. Um, because, I can't figure out how to frame this. Um, so we're, we're trying to make sure that these virtual meetings mimic your in-person meetings and the process you'd use as closely as possible. Mm -hmm. And because you would not allow public commentary at your board meetings, during any portion of the meeting other than public comments, uh, you are allowed to disable the chat function if you would like for both full board or committee meetings. Um, if you keep the chat up, it does need to be part of the official record. So uh, it's kind of an either or situation. We confirm that with the clerk's office in advance of your last full board meeting. Oh, okay. Well, Good to know and i guess yeah. we should like write that down somewhere so people would know yeah. that they can't make side comments and they think can it's just going to be private. available for everybody to see yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> and um, jessica decided to not to put it in my chair's report the election but make it a what, what did you say an action item yeah I'll find i think that's one. better okay okay thank you excellent noted Okay. Okay. All right. Sheila, would you like to adjourn? Thank you, Sheila, for a good meeting. Good meeting. Bye, John. Goodbye. Oh, yes. Everyone say goodbye to John. Today is his oh, last goodbye, day. John. His last oh, I'm minutes. taking the period out of a policy J. <laughs> <laughs> it is updated on the it's website. Final <laughs> official action <laughs> for the library. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. Work Bye. with these. <laughs> <laughs>